it is, may the best dirty politician win. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it's not much control we have about that, for sure. Um, well, I guess we want to know if you've ever, like, been a part – I mean, you mentioned about going to, like, some uh, some kind of um, – a couple of years ago to um, to Hollywood for information if you had a problem with a landlord. But have you ever, like, gone to, like, a workshop or have you ever received information from, like, a nonprofit organization or community organization that informed you of your tenant rights? No, I haven't. I would love to, but it, the, the people that do that, they don't know how to advertise. You know what I mean? The, the people that have, go tenant rights, they should be advertising in public schools, you know, like elementary schools or or whatever, or hand up flyers near public schools, elementary schools. They just don't know how to advertise. You, you just can't put up a website and go, you expect people to come to you, you know, or help you out, right? So. Tenants are are lost in the dark in terms of their rights, and and all the tenant rights people, all the tenants rights people uh, or organizations, they don't, just don't know how to effectively advertise, you know, or mar- market it. They don't know the word. I call it MAP, marketing promotion. They don't know, you know. So, uh, I mean, so the tenants rights organizations are basically professional victims, right? You know, they they victimize themselves by. I mean, they're enthusiastic, but they don't know how to reach. You know, they don't know how to market themselves, you know. You just can't put a website and go, well, the people will come to us. No, they won't. They'll find us. No, they won't. Word of mouth. No, they won't. Right? You got yeah. to hit them where, you know, where, where maybe go, hit them with, you know, at where the elementary schools are or where all the high schools are, you know. All right, you know, or where the restaurants are, you know. And then it's like it's it's frustrating because I mean I I'm lost in the dark in terms of legal rights, lost in the you know and all of stuff you know. So I was like, okay, I, I'm just going to be a hardworking guy that gets work works his job you know at a restaurant etc. Goes home, makes a living, and knows zero about his tenant rights, right? You know, and mm-hmm. it's like and there's. I mean, or if if you want to if you want to help, uh, good. You should be able to Google do a SEO search engine optimization on Google, on, on so that something would pop up, you know, like number one result instead of you know a government website or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, it's like it's it's frustrating. I mean, it's frustrating, you know, and it's like, you know, and and and, and, and the funny part is a lot of tenants don't help each other. They, when they find some new information, they don't really share it with other people, right? So I was mm-hmm. like, okay, that's great. You know, you find information and you don't share it with other people. I mean, it, I think it should be a law or, a, a, you know, a moral law. It's just, if you get some benefit from doing something you found out from tenant rights or tenant control or t- whatever, pay it forward and pay, tell 10 other people at least, right? That would be a blessing, Right. Instead yeah. of just keeping to yourself and going, well, they helped me a lot. It goes, yeah, they helped you a lot, but they can't help nine other people because you kept it secret to yourself. You dumb, bleh. you know, so <laughs> it's a swear word, but, you know, I, I, I held myself. Mm-hmm. I held myself. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I mean, that's the reason why I'm doing this study. It's kind of like it was 10 years ago when I started, well, was it 10 years? Back in 2009. Um, I it was the first time I began trying to like understand and be like, wait, oh, there's this legal system, there's these rights, and and I it made me think a lot about like, oh, I don't, I, I'm a renter, but I do not know my own rights, you know, and no one does. and I know that a lot of other people do not know, and so like, how did that gap happen, you know, and like, and then there's very, and then there's organizations, there are a lot of organizations, but then even them, and and I love everything you said because. It, it it really does express that frustration that I've also heard from others, but also I myself just have said right, and that's why I came to grad school because I was like, I want to go and see if people understand how how community organizations, you know, like communicate their resources um, and like how they advertise. And the advertising aspect is also another thing, you know. I'm noticing that in a city of LA that's very diverse, um, there are 
I, I'm, I'm, I'm learning that some, I, there actually, there are some organizations, very few, um, there's actually one that does it really well, um, that organization that holds workshops and, um, and provides information in the schools and just uh, educates the parents about the resources that are available in the communities. And what's the name of that organization? The it's called Esperanza Community Center. Sunset Community Center? Esperanza. Esperanza? I, I can text you the um um the organization okay. and the website. The website's actually down. But is yeah. uh they're but they basically have this model where they have um they call them um they train um uh, women and um uh, men in they call them promotoras, and they're basically like um, health social workers, public health social workers, where yeah. they work with the community and basically just like um, put together workshops and form people and just just make sure they they're kind of like the um, um, the community organizers, but they live among the community, um, wow. and they get to know um, their community and they get to know the resources and they get to communicate, you know, like. And so it's been, and but it's um it and they mostly work with the um within the um south central um and central LA location for the mostly immigrant communities there. So it's this really beautiful model that I have found, and I think, and I was just thinking like I think that should be highlighted, um, and it's not something that I um that I see happening in other parts of LA. But I, I mean, there's other um, organizations that try to do work with the community, but still. There's still people that are being left out, you know. Yeah, so but that organization should say, "How can we get this model and get uh, franchises, basically, throughout LA of that model?" You know what I mean? Because there's no will. There's no will. There's no nobody wants to do it, and I'm sure it's profitable. I'm sure you could figure out a way to make money off from it or whatever, right? But there's no will, right? You know. I go copy that model from in that South Central thing and put it in in West LA, or put it in uh, Hollywood, or put it in West Hollywood, right? You could get that model, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. One of the tools I found recently is the AOA, Apartment Owners Association. That website is all about the landlords, but it's a really good tool for tenants to study. You can learn a lot from what that side, and it's it's it's. I think the tenants have complete free. It's free, you know. You can it's open access. I, at least I think now it's still open access, mm -hmm. right? And you can go hit all these links, and it goes all these. So AOA is all about the landlord, nothing about the tenant. But if you go on it, you, you the tenant. You, there's your tenant rights right there. And do people do? Does my neighbor know about it? Apartment five, no. My neighbor in apartment four, nobody, no. Did my neighbors downstairs, nobody, no. Right? Because mm -hmm. there's no will. There's not an effective way of communication going, heads up, folks, if you want to get a lot of good benefits, uh, right, here's this page, you know, 10-page booklet, whatever. It goes, the apartment owning session is great because it tells you a lot of your tenant rights, for example, this, how, you know, and you can say why, you know, et cetera. You know, you can put testimonials. I used the apartment ordinance association and I found out that I have this right and or this right, et cetera. Right. But how did just, you run into AOA? Like what what were you looking for information? I was um, the AOA I found I, I noticed I think my my landlord was using it or something. Uh, I don't know. I think my landlord was using it or something with a form. Mm hmm And I I goes, Oh, my landlord's using this form from the AOA. So I started looking it up and I go, oh my goodness, this is this is like I'm finding a gold mine, a gold mine of information. I go, wow, and, and it's, a, it's like the secret thing that all the landlords use. <laughs> yeah, well, not a lot of landlords are part of associations, but yeah, there are several like or um, associations, um, landlord associations, um, in first out in California. So. Yeah. You know I about do, that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I, this is my field I'm studying. I, I'm curious to know if you've ever heard of the Los Angeles Tenants Union? I think so. But yeah? I think I've heard of Los Angeles Tenants Union, but 